A multiplex is a digital circuit used to reach signals around a bigger circuit. It's also referred to as a MUX and it connects multiple data inputs to a single output. So we need to have a separate input which selects which data input to connect to the output. So it's a bit like the kind of thing you see on the railway track. So imagine we've got the kind of two inputs like this and then this in this select input will select which input to connect to the output. So we can either have it connected like this or like this. So depending on the state of the select bit. So to design a multiplexer, we first need to define the required circuit behavior. So we're going to say when the select input is zero, the output is Y is connected to D0. And when the select input is one, the output Y is connected to D1. We can summarize that as shown in the truth table. So when S is zero, the output Y just equals D0. And when the select bit is one, the output Y just equals D1. So we can now construct the truth table. So we've actually got three inputs. We've got our two data inputs, D, D0 and D1. And then we've got our um, select input as well. So these three are our inputs. So we've got our eight possible inputs. We've got our output Y. And then this is just a min term number. So zero up to seven. So from the truth table, we know we're not, from the design problem, sorry, when S is zero, we know that Y equals D zero. So for the situations when S is zero, Y is just going to be equal to D zero. So we just have to copy those values here. So when S is zero, Y equals D zero. So that essentially means the multiplex is connected like this inside. We're just routing D zero to the output Y. Now for the case where S is one, Y, we know that Y equals D one. So when S is one, Y equals D one. So we just need to copy these values onto the output. So that's just the case when the multiplex is like this. So S is one, D one is just connected to the output Y. And now we've got our full truth table for the multiplexer. So again, we can look at the we can construct the SOP expression from looking at the truth table. We could just look for all the cases where there's a one in the output column, and we've just got the min terms. Let's right take the min terms and sum them together. So it gives us this expression here. And we can write it in, in canonical form. So we've got m2 plus m3 plus m5 plus m7. So we saw that was quite a long complicated expression for the MUX, but once we've done Boolean algebra in the course, we'll be able to see that we can simplify that expression to get this, this final expression. From this expression, then we can just easily build the circuit for the multiplexer. So you can see we've got these terms just all together. So that's why we've got the R gate here. So you can actually, you can kind of see the behavior of the multiplexer just from looking at, at the, um, at the circuit implementation. So you can see that this the S branches off, but one of the branches goes through a not gate. So we know that, um, I'll call this X here, and say this Y here, so. So X and Y are always gonna be opposite of each other. So when S is zero, we know that this will be a zero. So when S is zero, that's going to be zero, and that'll be a one. So we know of an AND gate when an, when any input on an A on an AND gate is zero, we're going to output a zero. And when it's a one, we'll actually just get the value of D naught here. So effectively, when S is zero, we're effectively turning off this AND gate and we're passing through D naught to the output. Now, when S is a one. For this not gate, that ends up being a zero, and having a one here. 
for this effectively because we know we got a zero on this AND gate input so we're going to get a zero on the output so we're effectively turning off this AND gate and then D1 will be piped to the output so that's how you build a multiplexer and there's also a D multiplexer which is essentially MUX in reverse also called a DMUX so now we've got a single input D and then we can route that to different uh, outputs so in this example here we've just got two out, uh, outputs Y0 and Y1 and then the select bit which is going to select so the D is sent to Y0 or it's sent to Y1 so again this is actually easier to build so the first thing to note though is that we've just got two inputs now we've got our data input D and our select bit S now we've actually got two outputs so these in the truth table now we've actually got two output columns so this is one output and Y1 is a separate output so now we've got two outputs and then this truth this truth table kind of outlines the behavior of the circuit so when when the select bit is zero D is just going to send get sent to Y0 and then when the select bit is one D is going to go to Y1 and in both cases the other input is just the other output is just going to be zero so just from looking at these ex, uh, these output columns here we've only got for each of them we've only got one if we look at Y0 first for example there's only one row when the output is a one so that gives a min term so that's just not S and D so that gives the expression for Y0 <clears throat> and then Y1 is a completely separate output so we'll look at this column there's just one row in which the output is a 1 and that's S and D so this gives the expression for Y1 so from those expressions it's simple to build uh, the circuit so similar to what we saw before we can see when S is zero this is going to be one that's going to be zero so because that's a zero we know this is zero so effectively turning that gate off connecting d1 to the output so when s is a one that's going to be zero we know that'll be zero so effectively that's switched off and d is going to be sent to this output <coughs> 